Thank you, Elliot. Um, I noticed that the early steam-driven uh, vessels also had mast and sails, mm -hmm. um, probably because they didn't quite trust the steam, or if it broke down. Yes. So when did they start really trusting steam and get rid of the masts? Um, the early engines are very inefficient. Um, it's not just that. I mean, engine efficiency is improving, but it's, it, the, the adoption of twin propellers makes a difference. So you've got two engines now instead of one. If one breaks down, you've got another one to keep you going. Um, it, it's it, it slowly, it's a sort of very slow change. Right into the 1920s, 1930s, there are still iron, iron hulled steam vessel, sorry, sailing ships, pure sailing ships operating commercially. What really drives, I think, the, 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 sail, um, the sailing ships out of it is the lack of predictability. With a steamship, a reliable steamship, you know pretty much to the, to the day when it's going to arrive at its port. With a sailing ship, and you know, if you imagine trying to get up the English Channel and then into London, so you need a westerly wind to get up the Channel, you need an easterly wind to go up the Thames, which is where you get a massive anchorage at the Goodwins. Off, uh, off Margate, because one lot of ships are waiting for the wind to go the way they want, and the other lot are waiting for it to go the other way. With steamships, that eliminates you, you just carry on. But even, you know, the, the sailing ships, you know, the last time sailing barges working commercially into early 1970s. But it's, it's a very slow process. 